And joining me now is Sean Spicer, Chief Strategist and Communications Director for the RNC. Sean, great to talk to you, sir. Good to talk to you, Steve. Your it's a pleasure. You're braving the snow in, in uh, Detroit ahead of tonight's debate? I am. I'm already looking forward to the debate in Miami next week. Not because I'm not excited about tonight, but because I think I'm, I'm ready for a little warmth. Well, I know Neil Cavuto said you might need some Pepto-Bismol for tonight. Maybe you, maybe you need uh, some galoshes, too. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's get to this right now. Uh, your take on what Mitt Romney did today. And by the way, he didn't do it in a vacuum. John McCain came out and basically seconded what, McC what uh, Romney said. Paul Ryan again today said, I, I'm going to defend conservatism if, if I have to. So it seemed to me like it was a one big punch followed up by two jabs. Well, I, look, I, I hate to say this, but I think, I mean, we're at a very important point in this cycle. And I think uh, there's a lot at stake and people who are for one candidate or against another are going to come out and have their voice heard. And I think that's important. But I also think it's important that people get out and vote. And at the end of the day, the Republican Party will support whomever gets 1,237 delegates. Yeah, I, I, I OK. But uh, when the former I mean, this is unprecedented. This whole election cycle is unprecedented to one extent or another. I think you would agree with that. Uh, is it helpful to the Republican Party, which of which you know you're the uh, you're, you're you're with the RNC. Is it helpful to the Republican Party overall in the scheme of things? Do you believe for the the, pre the previous Republican presidential nominee to come out and basically, in my opinion, write Hillary Clinton's campaign speech for the general election for her? Well, look, I I, I think. Myself and Chairman Reince Priebus have said before, we are big believers in, in uh, Reagan's 11th Commandment. I would rather have all of the firepower directed against Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders and all of the other talk focused on promoting you know, each individual candidate. That being said, I mean, it doesn't take anyone you know, much to look back to the history of our country to realize that politics is a contact sport. Um, and, you know, some elbows are going to get thrown. So if some name callings and nasty tweets are the extent of it, um, with so much at stake, I could probably live with that as long as we realize that we have to keep our eye on the prize as Republicans, unify after we get out of Cleveland, focus on our nominee and ensure that we, we beat the Democrats and take back the White House. Steve, there's too much at stake. We have four potential Supreme Court justices that could potentially sway the trajectory of this country and, and judicial uh, you know, jurisprudence for, for, the, for the next generation and beyond. I think we have to be focused after we uh, after the delegates choose uh, the nominee. I, I could not agree with you more. And, and so does that mean that the RNC uh, supports anybody, supports Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, John Kasich, whoever gets the nomination, they will be, they, you will support them. You will not support a, a third party candidate. That's right. We will support whoever the nominee is. That is our job. Those are our rules. Whomever the voters and the delegates select, we will put the resources uh, behind that individual and, and fight to win in November. Now, there's a report that's breaking uh, today uh, that says Romney's goal, and I, 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 I said this, and I'm going to say it later in my Gimme Five, um, I think Romney's goal is, and not just Romney, is to have a brokered convention where Donald Trump cannot get the delegates he needs on the first ballot to be nominated, and then that's it. Then he'll be pushed aside. You talk about the importance of this election for, because of the Supreme Court. I could not agree with you more. And I got to tell you, if Trump feels he gets screwed at the convention, even if it follows the rules, I mean, even if he's like 100 delegates short and winds up not getting it, uh, and he gets screwed, he will run his third party. And if Trump gets the, the, uh, the nomination and someone else runs his third party, either of those scenarios means Hillary Clinton is president. Are you, do you agree with me on, those, uh, on that, that if there's a third party, it's Hillary? Yes. Yeah, I think people have to recognize that we need as a party to grow and get bigger, not smaller. And if there's a third party now, then again, if, if that third party is Michael Bloomberg and he wants to run as the second Democrat, I'm all for that. Right. But if we don't, as a party, recognize that we need to be unified as conservatives, um, then yes, I, I have no doubt that it makes that path almost impossible. And Hillary, and you're basically saying that you are willing to let Hillary Clinton govern this country. So, so is it worth? I mean, do you believe there'll be any 
technicality pulled at the convention. Say Trump is way ahead, but just short. Can you envision at that point a brokered convention where Trump, even though he's oh so close, doesn't get it because, you know, so many senators don't want him, so many in the establishment don't want him, and that will lead, really, to a Hillary presidency. Look, I, uh, here's what I would say, Steve. We, it, we've got about uh, 2,500 delegates up for state, up for grabs, rather. We've had about 625 that have been awarded so far. We are less than a quarter away through the process. I think if anyone actually ran the entire table, got every single delegate between now going forward, they wouldn't still get the nomination until almost the end of April. We have a ways to go. And to start talking about potential convention scenarios, I think is extremely premature. I think we have to let more people vote. We have to let more states vote. And we'll see where this thing takes off to. But I think to, to start you know, pre-gaming this is like trying to figure out after one game in the season who's going to play in the World Series. It's a right. little premature. Right. You mean spring training doesn't count? All right. One more for you. Yes. Last night I heard Megyn Kelly talk about in anticipation of Romney's speech uh, that uh, Romney is beloved by Republicans. So I tweeted this out. It led to Jennifer Rubin of the Washington Post unfollowing me, by the way, eventually. But I tweeted out uh, to Megyn Kelly, come on, Mitt Romney is beloved by most Republicans. Are you serious? Um, do you believe that Mitt Romney is beloved by most Republicans? Well, uh, Mitt Romney's a great man. I think, uh, he, you know, look, I, I think there's a difference between beloving someone and respecting them and believing everything that they say, right? So uh, I have a lot of respect for Governor Romney. Um, I think he's a very good man. Um, but, I, but I think that there's a difference between, you know, what you think about someone and, and sort of believing in, in whether or not you're going to walk, walk over hot coals for them. Uh, right. So, so I, personally, he may be beloved. Is that what you're saying? But politically, a different story. Well, I think politically, no one's, I mean, look, he was, this, he was our nominee last cycle. I think uh, a lot of people have a lot of respect for him. Um, but but I, I guess there's a difference between, you know, liking somebody, thinking favorably with them, and then walking in march lockstep with them, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Sean, thank you for your time, sir, and I appreciate it. Look forward to our next conversation. You bet. Thanks for having me. All Steve. right. My pleasure. Sean Spicer, ladies and gentlemen.